Senator from South Carolina. I just want to compliment Senator Cotton for reminding us what the, the job in Congress is to defend the nation. And the, the odd outcome here is at a time of growing conflict, we're reducing the Navy. There are 296 ships in the Navy today. Under this budget, by 2025, there'll be 286. If we continue with the Biden budget, there'll be 290. The Chinese Navy today is 340. By 2025, they'll have 400. By 2030, they'll have 440. This budget locks in a smaller U.S. Navy at a time the Chinese Navy is growing dramatically. There's not a penny in this budget to help beat Putin. The Navy is smaller, the Army is smaller, the Marine Corps is smaller. This is not a threat-based budget. This is a budget of political compromise where people have lost sight of what the country needs. We need safety and security. To my House colleagues, I can't believe he did this. To the Speaker, I know you got a tough job. I like you, but the party of Ronald Reagan is dying. Don't tell me that a defense budget that's $42 billion below inflation fully funds the military. Don't tell me that we can confront and challenge China. Everybody in this body is patting themselves on the back that we see China as the most existential threat to America. You are right. We did the CHIPS Act. We're doing things to help our economy combat China. At the moment of decision, when it came to the military, this budget is a win for China. Please don't go home and say this is fully funded, because it is not. Please stop talking about confronting China when you're dismantling the American Navy. How does this end? Senator Cotton's right. We'll be here to Tuesday until I get commitments that we're going to rectify some of these problems. The ranking member of the Appropriations Committee, Susan Collins, has been steadfastly in the camp of fiscal responsibility and national security. This deal has taken the Appropriations Committee out of the game. The CR, which kicks in, cuts defense and increases non-defense, making it really hard for me to believe that we're actually going to do our appropriations job. So what I want to do, I want a commitment from the leaders of this body that we're not pulling the plug on Ukraine. There's not a penny in this bill for future efforts to help Ukraine defeat Russia, and they're going to gain on the battlefield in the coming days. And it's just not about Ukraine. I want a commitment that we'll have a supplemental to make us better able to deal with China. I want a commitment that we're not going to weaken our position in the Mideast. There's a report out today that Iran is planning to attack our troops in Syria to drive us out. We're expending weapons that need to be replenished. Our military is weakening by the day. This budget that we're about to pass makes every problem worse. I want to end the war in Ukraine by defeating Putin. If you don't, he keeps going, and we're going to have a conflict between NATO and Russia, and our troops will be involved. And if you don't send a clear signal now, China will see this as an opportunity to leap into Taiwan. So to the members of this body, we're staying here as long as it takes to get some commitment that we're going to reverse this debacle sooner rather than later. <clears throat> With that, I'll yield to my good friend from Alaska. Mr. President. Senator from